Hey, what's up, guys? I uh, picked up this uh, $85 Amazon 60-amp uh, alternator. It's like a mini-style alternator. I'll show you guys real quick. There you go. Uh, I'm going to open it up, show you how to clock the back of the alternator in, and then just show what the internals of the alternator look like and how simple this one's put together. All right, so this is pretty much how you get the alternator out of the box. It's a cute little thing. It weighs about 10 pounds, I guess, maybe a little bit more. Uh, I've already opened it up, and uh, so we'll just go through that real quick. So to start, you'll want to probably pull off the front pulley. I've already got this all loosened up, so that all comes apart. Bearing, sealed bearing there uh, on the back. Uh, we have this cover, comes with a plug, and it also comes with the uh, instructions on what the wiring is supposed to look like. Let's see if I remember how this goes. I think it's this way. About like so. So, first step, we're going to pull off this back plate. And uh, I've already got all these loosened up. So my initial problem was... This is the top of the alternator here, so in my car it would sit like this. The original problem is this post was located over here on this side. And uh, that wasn't going to work, so I wanted to clock the back of the alternator around. So went through the trouble of tearing this whole thing apart to figure out how to make that happen. So I'm going to pull off these screws in the back. So in order to get this plate off, you're going to need to loosen up this nut here to get this plastic insert to loosen up to allow the sheet metal back to come off. So there you go. Just a cute little cover. Doesn't do much. So from here, you can see the exciter that manages the voltage and the field coil current. Here's the uh, field coil. Uh, commutator, I guess is what you want to call it. The brushes, uh, it's pretty, it's actually replaceable. It's a pretty simple little uh, device. Here's your diodes for your full wave rectifier. Here's the output pin. So, I've already got so these three screws were what were holding all that together. So, from here, uh, we could take these the rest of the way out. So I already had this apart. So these wires actually come through this small hole here. And in these other locations, it comes up, loops around, and is held down with some small screws. So uh, those have already been removed, as you can see. So the only thing left really is these three here. So from here, the brushes come out. This is the brush assembly, spring, spring, and then the retaining screws there, and then as you can see this thing, it's got to have a transistor and some other logic inside to change the current going into the field coil to change the voltage and therefore change the amperage on the output also. So, once you get these wires bent out of the way and straightened, you can pull the rectifier uh, bridge off. Make sure you don't lose any screws. And there you go. So, that's pretty much it. So, the phases come in, connect to here, and here. So, they connect here, 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 and here. And that's where the AC current comes in that gets rectified. And then you end up with your positive bus, and then the other side has got to be a ground. Uh, it's got to be a ground here, I'm thinking, to the chassis, and that gives you your negative voltage. Yeah, because you also have a post here connects to that also. So we'll set this aside real quick. So this is the tricky part. This got me for a minute. So once you get these nuts off top and bottom here and oh, we can 
just do this here. So these came out with just screwdrivers, probably recommended just to use your eight mil um, or 5 16th socket and a quarter drive or 3 8 drive. This all would probably come apart fairly easily with um, an el your electric quarter inch drive impact. This got me earlier, trying to get this apart the first time. Um, the you have to take the front pulley off because what happens is the shaft is going to want to stay with the rear assembly. So once you're at this point, you got the two bolts out, the two nuts off. Uh, pulls apart, the front sucks in. So now you have the front assembly along with the stator. And here's the rotor. Uh, so from here, you really don't have to do anything on this side because all we're going to do is rotate it and shove it all back together. The only problem is you need to line back up these four, your three phases in the center of the uh, stator. So in order to do that, though, you have to take off this guy and this guy because they are physically holding in the stator because you can't beat the stator out unless you take these nut these bolts all the way out so just take one of them out real quick since I already have it clocked where I want it but yeah so these will come completely out once you do that on both sides the stator just falls out so then you'll rotate it 180 degrees and shove it back in uh, if it does it's yeah have to kind of be careful with it it will go in um, so I'm just gonna snug this back down we're gonna pretend that we twisted the stator around and then putting it all back together to these two bolts work nice to cinch it back down square because I was having problems getting it to bottom out so now when you're at this point putting it all back together uh, so on the back here you can see you have one or sorry, one, two, three, four. So that's gonna match, that's gonna match your, oh, there we go. That's gonna match your one, two, three, four. So let's put that like that. Get this all spun around here. About like that. So now this time, when I go to put all the electronics back together, I'm gonna have to make sure I can hit the hit the right holes to get it through the plastic insulator. So we have these two nuts snugged on there. So now we're gonna go ahead and drop the large screws back through. on the corners and put the wrench on it just in case all right so now just to help hold this up we'll put the pulley back on it there we go much nicer okay so the fun part is going to be, okay, is lining up these four uh, leads through the holes here. So, let's see if we can get that figured out. There we go. Perfect. Okay. So, see those are now in there. So all we got to do is put a 180 degree bend on them 
and then run the screws through them. Okay, so if now, so now we're going to get the uh, controller stabbed on here, and then we're going to drop the brushes in their spot. So let me get that figured out. of getting this alternator is to pull a little bit of weight off the front of the car. I think this weighs, thing weighs probably half as much as the, the GM1 wire I have on there. So by pulling a little bit of weight out of the car, I think it's going to be helpful. Just less mass to spin. Okay, so that's got the rectifier, or the con the controller is now snug down. So now it's just dropping the brushes, the brush assembly, down in there. ever tighten everything down until you have all of the bolts started. It's just the way it works. So let's... I should now have all of the screws so one, two, three, four, five, there we go. All five in there. So from this point, from this point, I need to bend all these over, create a nice little U, and then run the screws down. So I'll do that real quick and then we'll come back. All right, show you guys real quick. The last screw, got the other four in there, or three I should say it's pretty easy just bend the wire around and then uh, shove the screw down in there All right. cool all right so the last piece essentially is just the cover there you have it so now the back cover is back on, which will help hold the rectifier assembly in place. So there you go. So now the output post is in a more favorable position. It used to be down over here, which was running into the water pump and a whole bunch of other things. And this plug was buried up against the cylinder head. So now everything's rotated around. That should clear. Uh, just fine. It ends up almost in the exact same spot as the GM1 wire I have on there now. So there you have it. It's a cute little thing. Uh, give you an idea on size. Uh, the spacing on the bolts, I think, is a little bit tighter than the GM alternator. So that just gives you an idea. The GM alternator is probably just as big as the circumference. The circumference from here to here. The diameter. Plus the ear sticking off each side. So it's considerably lighter, so we'll see. We'll put it up to the test here shortly.